Para Yotis Yanopoulos says, it's an oversimplification also to put all on the same basket and say they were no different. Alexander brought with him Greek city architects in general, along with gymnasiums, museums, sports, economic advancements, all the fascinating, fantastic Greek culture and advancement of the times. He had he offered it to be freely shared. He is maybe the only one who built more cities than he raised. So what uh, Mr. Yanopoulos is saying is that uh, Alexander the Macedonian was actually a very good, generous, benevolent king. He conquered to enrich the conquered peoples with Greek culture and Greek architecture and uh, economics and sports and museums and advancements because these conquered people were all backward, right? They did not have any advancements that the Greeks had. So Alexander conquered in order to... um, bring these people out of their backwardness and offer all these fantastic European advancements to them. So let us take a look at uh, Alexander the Macedonian's exploits, shall we? Let me share my screen with you, my friends. Let's talk about Alexander. Right. Just a minute. Let me remove this. Here we are. So this is uh, in the beginning. This, This is a book called, the book's name is The Madness of Alexander the Great and the Myth of Military Genius. The author is Richard Gabriel. Note it down, purchase the book if you can. Now, what does it say here? This is uh, in the uh, beginning of Alexander's uh, career as as a tyrant. So he conquered the city of Tyre in Lebanon. Lebanon is in the eastern Mediterranean, okay. So when the Macedonians finally broke through the fortifications and entered the city, the slaughter was terrible for the Macedonians went to work with savage ferocity. Some 8,000 were killed and 30,000 men, women and children were were sold into slavery. As a final outrage, Alexander crucified all the men of military age. These were no less than 2,000. So I don't see any museums or culture or advancements being proffered to the people of Tyre here. You have 8,000 killed, 30,000 men, women and children enslaved and 2,000 men crucified. What sort of barbarian was he? Let's look further at Sri Alexander. The fact that Alexander took personal pleasure in the torture and death of Betis. Betis was a Persian general. Uh, It suggests the presence of a sadistic streak in his personality, which would make itself evident numerous times in the future. Later, Alexander personally witnessed the torture of Philotas, ordered the stoning of suspected conspirators, crucified thousands of captives, and occasionally murdered or tortured victims himself. What a nice person he was. These are Greek advancements, I suppose. Let's see some more. Brahmins, Indus, the Indus Valley campaign. Alexander sailed down the Indus River, attacking and slaughtering tribes as he went to no apparent military purpose, except perhaps to vent his frustrations for having to bring his Indian adventure to an end. He ravaged the kingdom of Sambus, enslaved the people of the population of most of the cities and later destroyed the cities. He then crucified the king. Oh, nice. The Brahmin priests were, uh, etc. The Brahmins urged resistance and Alexander took it personally, executing all the priests and their families he could get his hands on. Citing Clitarchus as their source, Curtius and Diodorus say that in this campaign against the Indian tribes, Alexander killed 80,000 Indians in this region and captured many others. Right? So, Uh, For whatever reasons, Alexander exterminated thousands of Brahmin priests. When he could not kill them in large numbers, he seems to have preferred hanging them individually. What a great man of culture! Let's look here. The victory over Porus had no strategic effect except to unify the Indians on the other side of the river to rally and prepare to fight Alexander together. Confronted with this opposition and the mutiny of his troops, Alexander was forced to abandon his campaign. 
the transit down the Indus River so Alexander per perpetrate one slaughter after another. If Alexander thought his brutality would induce would reduce resistance, he was grossly mistaken. Right? So he enjoyed it, it must be borne in mind that Alexander did not just order these atrocities to be committed. He was an enthusiastic participant in them. He enjoyed wading into the slaughter almost as if he could not stop himself. His passion for, for glory was such that he did not have the strength of mind to consider his own safety, etc. Alexander's killing was a bloody business indeed, where he could see the fear in his victims' eyes and all that. So this is the kind of individual Mr. Alexander was, Alexander, uh, Alexander the Great Macedonian. So I fail to uh, understand what was this Greek culture and ad advancements that he brought to these people, whether it is in Tyre, whether it is in Persia, whether it was in the western uh, fringes of India. There was no gymnasiums or museums or sports or economic advancements or Greek culture or advancement. It was barbarism, which seems to be a hallmark of the Western cultures, unfortunately. So that is all Mr. Alexander brought to, where, to whatever region he invaded. And it is only fitting that he met his end in India. He fought Porus. The Greeks claim that he defeated Porus, which seems to be an absolute lie of fabrication. What actually happened was that he was defeated in India. He was grievously wounded. He limped back to Babylon where he died from his wounds. So it is a fitting end to one of the worst barbarians in human history.